In the name of Allah, the Manafis and the Merciful, my dear friend, today I'm going to teach your IELTS test and it consists of three parts. Part 1, Part 2 and Part 3. I hope you are ready for that. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready, sir. That's great. Thank you. Can I see your identification, please? Uh, sure. Here is my ID card. All right. That's great. Uh, what's your full name, please? Uh, my full name is Rana Umair Raza. Uh, excellent. That's great. Okay, Mr. Raza, uh, I would like to ask you the questions uh, in part one. Uh, do you enjoy dancing? Why, why not? Yes, I do enjoy dancing because I think dancing is uh, a part of daily life and it's also, we can say, an exercise. Mm -hmm. And we can, uh, like we, we see on a different occasions, uh, like in our uh, festivals, in our traditional festivals or in our any ceremonies, mm -hmm. we dance uh, just as a joy or we can say like it's a traditional uh, thing for our... Has anyone ever taught you to dance? Why, why not? Yes, uh, like when I was in college, uh, we have a social night there, a festival every year. And there was uh, like uh, we have four to five provinces here and uh, they taught every single uh, traditional dances to the students and I'm one of them and uh, like they taught me the Punjabi uh, traditional dance called Bhangra. Excellent. Tell me about any traditional dancing in your country in particular. Yes, we do have several traditional dances according to the provinces like as I'm living in a Punjab so we have a, a traditional dance called Bhangra and every province has different traditional dances for Balochistan, Sindh and uh, like KPK Pashtuns. Uh, you know, it's a digital age. Uh, do you think that traditional dancing will be popular in the future? Exactly. I think uh, that traditional dances will be popular in the future because this is our, uh, like we can say, tradition and we have to follow that. And I think in the future it will be more popular. Excellent. Now, uh, after part one is over, I'm going to give you part two task card. Here you go and show it to me, please. I would like to show it to the audience. Sure. Uh, this is how this card is. All about describe an exciting experience in your life. And you should say what it is, when and where it occurred, what happened, and explain what was so exciting about it. It's going to be yours now. You can have one minute in order to make some notes. And afterwards, you'll have to speak for two minutes continuously on this topic, please. All right. Okay, my friend, your part uh, time's up. Please start speaking on this topic now. Yes, uh, the, my ex exciting experience in my life is my ISSB test in Gujranwala. Like I prepared myself in uh, like for five years in military college Sui, and I have done my FSC from there. And like it's my aim of life. Like I want not to go to the uh, an army. I want I want to join my like as a professional career as a commission officer. And we have prepared for that like in five years. And after my FSC, uh, I went for NSSB in uh, 2018 in the Gujranwala Center, ISSB Center, Gujranwala Center. And after that, like there was a four-day uh, test period there. I stayed there like for four days, and it contains different tests and different parts containing the physical test, the written test. DTO tasks and some other important things that is only to measure the uh, physical strength of the candidates and I stay there like for four days and I have uh, done uh, very well on those, on that, those four days and that was extremely wonderful experience for me because that was my first time experience there and like that was my aim of life to simply uh, like go to the ISSP center to clear all the necessary tests 
and afterwards I have to clear my medical test and went to the uh, Pakistan Military Academy Kakul. So overall some a wonderful experience and the thing that is more memorable for me that four days uh, test periods the candidates from all over the Pakistan and I really enjoy a lot uh, in those four days and those four days will be the best and memorable days in my life. Excellent experience. That's great. Um, you know that part three is also connected uh, with part two. Uh, this is the discussion uh, part. But sometimes the questions can be different from part two. It's not a hard and fast tool that uh, except will ask you always connection uh, I'll ask questions connected with part two in part three. So here we are going to take uh, I'm going ask, uh, to ask you some different questions. In what ways can people in a family be similar to each other? Yes, uh, we can see like a people in a family, in the same family, similar with each other, with their genetics. We can say with their genes as well, because it comes with the like uh, same genes from the very beginning. We can say like their uh, ancestors, their like family members, their fathers, their uh, grandfathers. So there's, that's, we can say, a, a kind of chain. So the, the people in the same family member are connected to each other as a chain in the same family. Do you think that daughters are always more similar to mothers than to male relatives? Yes, I think like daughters are like more similar uh, to the mothers because they are like we can say a same gender. So this is one of the reasons like daughters are more similar to the uh, mother and we can also see that uh, like the female gender has more emotional values. Like mm -hmm. they're more emotional values and I think uh, like they relate with the mothers, they, like uh, just the way the mother care for their sons, for their children. Mm. So daughters also have the same feelings. And what about sons and fathers? Yes, uh, like we can, uh, I, can I, I, see, I, I say that like sons are more relatable to the fathers because mm. uh, being a male, it's a, a responsibility for a male uh, a father uh, just like we can say handle and to uh, continue with the home and for like we, uh, we have to say that. Sons are more relatable to the fathers. Uh, okay. In terms of personality, are people more influenced by their family or by their fa uh, friends? In what ways? Yes, I think uh, like children are more influenced by their family because in the very beginning when a birth uh, came into place, uh, like this is the first responsibility of their parents to grow, uh, like we can say, to groom their uh, children. And like uh, we, we, we see that uh, the children, uh, the parents plays an important role in the growth of the children, the moral values that uh, parents gives to their children plays an important role in the society for their son and for their daughter, they can say the children. Thank you very much indeed. Your time's up. Your presentation is over. It was a mock test. It was, it's an abridged edition. I haven't taken your full flight test, but still I have evaluated your all three parts. Part one was okay, part two was okay, part three was okay as well. There are only small mistakes, uh, the mistakes of expression, and there are certainly sometimes you were thinking a little more than expected, and otherwise fluency was great. Um, apart from fluency, pronunciation was uh, very good, there was a clarity in your spoken, and apart from these two facts, there are two, two more important uh, grammar and vocabulary. I couldn't find any um, any uh, mentionable or reasonable mistake in these two factors as well. So overall, your performance was good, and you have given a wonderful presentation. The examiner now it depends on him how many marks he's going to give it to you. Uh, he will give at least seven point five bands because your overall presentation was wow, and I hope you're going to get uh, even more than that in the examination. Sure. God bless you. Thank you very much. I'll see you in another mock test. Uh, and in the meantime, bye-bye. Thank you so much.